So what's up guys? Uh, for some time now, I've been thinking about building a budget cine lens set from uh, a bunch of old Canon FD lenses, which are very good lenses for the price. Uh, the 2.8 line, the 28, 24, 35, 85, I don't think there is a 2.8. Uh, the 135 I already have, there's a 100 macro and a 200 f4, which I have coming in the post. Um, very good lenses for the price, but the problem being, if you want to use them on a mirrorless camera, it's a problem. The FD to mirrorless, you just buy this cheap little adapter that costs, I don't know, what, 10 euros or something, no problem. You can't use an FD on an EF mount, the flange distance is wrong. You can't go further backwards or forwards. I'm not a flange measurement expert, to be honest. I just know that it doesn't work. Um, there are some companies out there in the States, like Sinmod, that will do a hard conversion. They will send you or you send them your lens and they will remove this complete mount and put their own mount on, which is EF. The flange distance is right, so you still reach infinity focus. That's the problem, you can, you can mount it. There is adapters out there. They either have a glass in to help you reach infinity focus, but they reduce optical performance, or you have one without glass, but you can't reach infinity focus. The lens literally can't come back any further. You can't go inside the lens mount, I think is the case. Um, I found a guy who will print you uh, or he, will, he can have it, have it printed for you, an EF mount to fit on the new FD, the FDN or the NFD, whichever way you call it. The, the FD lenses with the little red dot here, and it has a straight bayonet fitting. It doesn't have the breech. It doesn't have this, this turning thing, which is just, I don't really understand why they did this. It's just so, it just makes, it's just so complicated. I don't know why they over-engineered it so much, but I'm sure they had their reasons back in the day. Um, he went, Offer I can't get hold of him to get the plans. I don't want to buy a printed one when I have a printer behind me. Um, so I thought I'd print my own stuff. So there's two problems. One is the aperture arm. When you de-click the aperture arm, there's no there's no longer a connection between, or no, there is a connection to the aperture arm, but the, the pin, the click, holds it open from the other direction where a spring wants to pull it back. Normally here, or one of these, has a little arm, the control arm, which controls the aperture. The aperture will always spring closed uh, and the click, the physical click is what holds it open. So when you take the ball out, you can open it. It works perfectly declick, but when you let go, it snaps closed to 22, 22, 16, closes down to 16, um, which is obviously useless. I took the spring off, then the arm doesn't reach and things. So, and, he, and the guy that sells this, uh, this EF mount for FD also says has to be sold with these little parts. Uh, he does a few different ones and I've been experimenting printing different ones. Let me show you the problem. The problem is there's a fly or a mosquito on my lens. This is a really old scratched up um, FD 1.4 50 mil that I bought purely for experimenting with. It's like 20 euros and it's, it's scratched the crap. It had fungus inside when I bought it. I cleaned it. Under the fungus was just like more scratches and yeah, it's, it's no good. So this, this, ah, I'm supposed to show you the other ones first. Okay, so basically the problem is the original arm would sit here and bridges this, so bridges this prong, which controls the aperture to this via the pin that sits in the middle. So when you take the pin out like I have now and the spring, the aperture is fully, gotta be careful not to go too far or this jumps over that pin and then you have some real problems getting it back over. Um, so this aperture ring, here, so 1.4 would be here. And as you can see, when you put it like in line with here, somewhere you get, you know, you get wide open. As you turn down, clutch, everything closes. Simple, right? No, <laughs> not simple at all. The bloody lens like zooms in and out when it focuses, like the, 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 it extends in. So now you can see, look at the height of the prongs here. And when I zoom out, they're all the way down there. The barrel extends. Uh, this makes a simple, you know, T-bar that fits through there and, and holds it doesn't work because when you zoom down, you have no aperture control. And when you zoom back up, you're never going to get it in line. It's going to, you know, it's going to come up over here and yeah, it just can't work. So I first printed this little round one, which slips over a prong and then we'll screw to this last hole here and I'll do it quick and show you the problem with this one. 
Like I'm not sure how interesting this is to other people, but I would love to hard, you know, to hard convert a, a set of FDs to Cine with EF mounts. Main reason I want to get a Zcam E2M4, which is a micro four thirds mount with a speed booster, so I can get as wide as possible. Um, because of course, micro four thirds, you're doubling your so 28 mil, the cheap or the, the the widest cheap lens, but in the Canon FD series is uh, 28 mil, so that's 56. On a, on a micro four thirds as a wireless lens, this is this is not this is too too telly, not too standard, but yeah. Uh, problem with this one: when you zoom in and out, it rises up. It was too long. It presses the bottom and it lifts up the aperture. No, it doesn't lift up. It just basically it stops. It pinches the end of the zoom between. This rises up and touches under here. Basically, you lose infinity focus. It physically won't go back any further because this is in the way. So I tried loads of different ones. I found out that he, this guy on, um, it's on Shapeways, links in the description. By all means, take it from him and buy from him. I just have a printer, so I wanted to kind of make it an experiment myself. And there seems to be, I've done a lot of research. One person, it's this guy, um, who does anything to do with this kind of um, FD to EF conversion. So I figured I'd experiment as well and join it along. So then I made this one, which sits between the two arms, which is how his is, and is much, much better. Uh, this didn't go back far enough. As you can see, this angle here is not as angled as, sorry, wrong way around. I made this one first. No, this one first. It angles in towards the screw. This one is more straight, as you can see. This one was better, I almost got fully open. Then I made this one, which definitely got me fully open, but not quite. This, this little brace I put across here to keep it stronger, this gets in the way. And here hits, the physical stop is, the, the aperture ring has its own stop, but I can't reach the stop with this one because as you can see, if I put it back to its hard stop, it's touching, this is hitting, this is gonna contact here before you reach the screw hole. Does that make sense? Before I come, before I'm at 1.4 on here, I'm hitting the end, so I can't fully open it. So I just made the, the, the latest iteration, which now has this bit cut off. Ah, oh, that was a problem with the other one. When you zoom up, that pin would hit, yeah, whatever one it is, would hit here and not allow you to reach infinity focus. Again, it's always a problem with these prongs coming up and being obstructed by something and uh, missing infinity focus. So on this one, I cut the corner off, which should allow the pin to come past. And I cut the back out a tiny bit, which should let me get all the way to, to fully into 1.4. So we can slot it in here, bring the ring up. Oh, look at that a fit. So the first bit was quite hard to make. The original curve, um, and the distance to the prongs, all of this kind of stuff. But since then, um, it's a case of just moving things forward a little bit, back a little bit, print it. It's only small, so each print takes uh, three or four minutes, which is fine. Um, I can already see, already see the problem with this one. Okay, now I come all the way back and I can feel the kind of last little click when it reaches 1.4. It's super hard to see, but I don't know if you can see it, but down here, it comes to the top of that little wedge. And when it gets to the top, it just, the tension releases a little bit. So it kind of wants to stay open, which is kind of nice. But now my box is twisted a little bit. This is twisted and it's got good contact here, but on this side, you know, these pins are flexible. So if I bend that pin back a little bit, now it's, and there's absolutely no play there, which is good. A lot of the round ones I made had play. So there would be a little wiggle room before the aperture started to engage. Not a huge problem, but if it's something that I would um, consider releasing or selling or doing as a conversion, then it, you know, it needs, to, needs to work better. So now let's zoom down. This is the problem last time you'd zoom down, adjust some apertures. I think going this way is gonna be the problem. When you come up, it's gonna hit the aperture arm. No, ha, yes, nailed it. Okay, awesome, you see? The old problem was this inside arm on this side, when it comes up, would contact this white. 
and now it misses it because I cut a little tiny bit out. Uh, I'd maybe rotate this box a little bit so it's so it's more perpendicular to the to the lens body. See here, it's like a little bit of an angle, but I mean, to be honest, it's working fine. And these are all prototypes. Uh, the next thing to do is to get the mount on there. There's differences between the old EF with the bayonet, like I said, and, and the new FD. Apparently the new FD is much easier to convert. I have found a 3D drawing of a Canon EF mount without, um, without any bottom. It's just a, a flat base with an EF mount on it. So I could print that at different the print the base at different thicknesses to extend the flange distance in or out. It's going to be a lot of experimenting and a lot of wasted print, but I don't really have a way of calculating it better or you know measuring it myself. So I think trial and error is the uh, is the go-to on that. And the last thing to do here is to put this back together because last time I thought I did it all and it was all good, and then I put it back together and couldn't reach infinity focus because it was just coming up and contacting the top. Of course, when it's made out of metal, you can make you know, a nice piece of aluminium or stainless steel, sorry, as it is, half a millimeter thick and it's perfectly strong with the print. You know, the, the technology is not there yet. I can't print one, yeah, one millimeter is okay, but like half millimeter plastic, it's gonna break. It's gonna break at some point. And if it's for me, it's okay if it breaks, you know, not on a job somewhere, but these are not really for jobs. They're just kind of for, for fun and for, you know, a little, short stories and for my own for my own little personal projects. I wouldn't risk using one of these prototypes until they're really nailed down uh, for a paid job. I would stick with my, my, my modern glass. Okay, so we are back together. We have beautiful full aperture control. Declicked it and I used some, there's a little weird feeling there, but it's full open. Uh, I bought some really cool synthetic Grease, it's a spray grease, comes out very fluid and then dries very, very sticky. It's a high adhesive, what's it called? High, high adhesive pressure resistant synthetic grease. It's an old set I bought, I got. It's an old tin my dad gave me when he closed his business down about 15 years ago. And uh, I've still got it and it's for this. I know there is proper greases and stuff, but again, this is just practicing. So I'm just using what I had in my workshop downstairs. So now I'm zoomed all the way in. Sorry, not zoomed all the way in, I'm at in Fully add infinity focus. I'd like to make, I'd like to adjust the hard stop for infinity so it's really infinity. It's just a tiny, tiny bit off, but better than a lot of modern lenses, which is completely off. Um, aperture fully working. Okay, let's go all the way to close focus. It's much easier when this is on the mount. and still have full aperture control. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm gonna to have to do this a ton of times and see if it breaks because... I know it does, I can see it. Could, I might have to bring the arm back a tiny, tiny bit more, but that's the stage I'm up to. Um, if you're interested in this project, which I'm, I'd imagine there's a few people that are interested in you know, a hard conversion from an EF lens, you have no mounts, no adapters. They just, you can't put them in a mirror in a DSLR obviously, because they're still going to hit the mirror. And that's one of the problems, um, I guess, I think. Anyway, that's not what I'm doing it for. I'm doing it for an EF speed booster to use on a micro four thirds, because it doesn't really seem to be a good way. Well, I've done a lot of research. If anyone else knows something else that I haven't got to mess around with all this, it's fine, tell me, to get an FD lens onto an EF mount. Like the flange distance to me is not important. I have no mirror. It's going on the speed booster. It's just a piece of glass there. Um, or if you can get an FD speed booster to MF, to uh, two micro four thirds, because I don't need to convert to EF. I just need to get the FD with a speed booster on micro four thirds. And this is the way I'm looking at doing it. Uh, I hope the mount works. I hope it's good. It's gonna take some time. Uh, if it's good, I'll release the plans and it's something people can use uh, to, to create their own cine set. I'm also gonna do uh, follow focus gears uh, and uh, 80 mil lens cap printed uh, like with, a, with the, um, the cine style tube on the front. So all the lens caps are the same. I'm gonna engrave on the lens caps, the size of the lens, yeah, the, 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 the focal length of the lenses. Gonna convert it into a full set, just like Media Division did. I don't know if you've seen their video. They use the Cine mod um, modifications and caps. Super amazing set when it's finished. It looks fantastic. Uh, they do a really good video on um, 
FD lenses. The, there was a Cine version of FD lenses called K series or something, K35, K30, something. Super, super rare. You can't really find them. Canon didn't do, back in the day, many Cine lenses at this time, uh, at that time, sorry. And they basically used FD glass. Anyway, so Media Division does a really cool video. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, an hour and a half long comparing the, the, the lenses and how you can get a close set to them from old FD lenses for maybe, yeah, including all the, the stuff from Cinemod, sort of six, 700 euros, as opposed to 200,000 euros, which I think the last set sold for. So something else interesting to check out. And if you're interested in that and you think it's a good idea, follow me back on my little journey of uh, breaking loads of lenses before I can get them to work again. So I think it's fun. It's a good little project. So stay posted and uh, see you next time.